Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and happy Friday. It is the second Friday of April and that means that I get to come in here and share with you another piece of artwork featuring this adorable must-have stamp and thin cut called Little Hedgehogs. And although the thin cut option has already sold out, you can still get this adorable stamp set that would be so easy to just fussy cut these images. And um, you really don't need necessarily the thin cut, although we all know how nice and convenient having that thin cut is. So I wanted to walk you through the second piece of artwork that I created with featuring this fabulous set. So I'm gonna set this off to the side because I've already done my stamping. And I'm gonna walk you through how to make this incredible easy pattern. It's gonna blow your mind how easy it is. And I have to do a huge shout out to my friend, uh, Michael Rowley, who is the inspiration behind this. And then Laura Beecham is also another maker in Australia who has also shared something very similar. And I just love to get inspired by other makers. And this is definitely one of those cards that just has such a wow factor to it. So before we get into that card, I also wanted to walk you through just some of the other pieces of artwork that I'll be sharing every Friday. Pop in here on my channel. I'm going to show you how to make this one next week. And then we're going to round out the month of April with this one. And then last week, I walked you through how to make this two-page layout. I will link it in the comments below. And um, it's, a, it's a great layout. So this is what page the left page looks like and then this is what the right page looks like and you know there are some digital files out there in design space that'll walk you through how to cut these but I wanted to show all of you how to do them without having to use a digital collection because I know a lot of you don't have a silhouette or a maker a Cricut maker so I wanted to be able to give you that option so that you could create these patterns on your own let's go ahead and get started I'm going to bring this in here and put this right up here in the top corner and you are just going to absolutely be shocked at how easy creating this pattern is. So you're going to take a piece of paper and I do have the cutting instructions and the measurements on a file so that when you qualify for the stamp of the month you'll get the measurements for this. So you're just taking that piece of cardstock and then you're taking strips of paper attaching them onto this with a score tape because you really need a super strong adhesive and this is the score tape that I use and then you're just cutting these and actually did I I did not I neglected to bring oh here's my paper trimmer I'm like I know I have a paper trimmer around here somewhere once you have gotten these onto the paper and they are one's going to hang over just a little bit and that's okay you want it to do that you're going to actually cut these into um, some strips and we're gonna cut them at two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And we only need a couple of these for the remainder of my project. Whoops, let's just cut these just like so. And actually I think we need four more. So you end up needing to do two complete strips for this card. And you do have some scraps left over that you could use for another project. So don't throw them away because every little scrap is good, right? Okay, and then here's the card base. I've already got four of them, the other four, started. And I basically laid them out onto my card front. Let me just get this in view so that you can see it. And I already want to apologize for my coloring video one one of my subscribers mentioned that you couldn't see most of it. So I apologize. I'm actually gonna recolor all of these little guys in front so that you can see what I did. I'm learning. I'm still getting, getting better every day. Practice makes better, right? Not looking for perfection, but getting better. Anyway, you're gonna lay these out just like that onto your card. And so do you see how you have quite a bit of open space? We're not to fret, we're going to, color or cover those up with the extra pieces but first what we need to do is get a lot of adhesive on here just like so and then we're going to attach these onto the card and you want that little bit of space 
showing in between them. The key is, is staggering them. You just want to make sure that as you're attaching these, they are all staggered. And that one is going to go just like that. And then this one, we wanted to make sure it was like that. And then I'm going to grab my scissors that I have right here. And you're going to turn this upside down. And you're going to trim that off. And just be careful that you don't cut your card. And I've done that. So the key is, is to just really go slowly and go right up against the edge. If you want to, you can even come over this way and do it. There is no right or wrong way, but I do tend to do better when I can actually see the line that I'm needing to cut. And so I'm just bringing this up to camera so you can see that better. Okay, and now what we wanna do is we wanna turn around and we want to um, close up those gaps, right? So this is my suggestion that you come over here and actually attach your adhesive right onto the card itself. That way when you are trimming, you won't have to worry about it not catching. And then we're just gonna attach that just like so. And again, we're gonna trim and then come around here. I'm gonna stand up a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, that looks great. And then technically we could come over here and we could try. Well, those we don't want to do that. We don't want to match up the same color. So I think this one might have to, we might have to come over here and do this corner as well, which I'm totally okay with. So actually let's do this. Let's do this side first and then we'll come and fix that little piece. And it really is an illusion that you're creating. So we're gonna, I think I'm okay with that. So we're gonna get that, let's get it a little bit tighter in there, just like so. And again, just take those scissors, trim, turn it, and then trim again. And if you need to get a little bit of that extra adhesive off of there, you can. And then we want to get that little piece in there. And I think I want to do a piece of gray. And because, let's see, how would we do this? I'm going to have to think about this for a second. Because technically it would be actually this corner right there. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna trim this off. And I think I'm gonna trim this off as well. Right up against that edge. And then let's get some adhesive on here. And this little guy is gonna go right there. And it probably, yeah, I think it's gonna be okay that way. I mean, it truly is just this little, little tiny square. And you see that little tiny square right there too? Like, oh my goodness, he's just barely hanging on. Okay, now let's move this one over here, just like that. That one is gonna fit perfectly. This is the hardest part, is getting all of these pieces on here strategically, but I'm kind of loving this pattern. Look at this cool pattern it's creating on there. Okay, let's turn this upside down. Oops, I've got everything sticking to me. Okay, let's take our time, cut into that one. And then we're going to cut into this one. And then we've got one left. And let's, we could just end it with that. I think we're going to do that because I just love this royal color. We really haven't used it since it came out. 
and it's such a brilliant purple. And then you can either use a rub and remove eraser to get that extra little bit of adhesive off or just use your fingers like I am. My rub and remove eraser is not handy at the moment. Okay, that looks great. And I may have to come back and fix that little piece with some glue. I think I will, but for right now, I am so pleased with that. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach this little guy onto here, right here, kind of up towards the top, just like that. We're gonna attach this with some score tape. And I am gonna come in here Just peel that off, just like so. Whoops. Grab this other little piece. I really should use either my tweezers or my nonstick scissors. Okay, this is gonna go just like that. And then I've already stamped my sentiment and I've already doodled around it with the black journaling pen. And this is gonna go right here, just like that. And I did use the Archival Black ink, one of my favorites. And then I've already colored this in with the Intense Black. Here, let's just move this over to the side. I'm trying to get all of this out of the way. And then the two colors, the three colors that I used are Hydrangea, the Muted Brown Blend, and the Dull Green Blend. So Hydrangea is a little bit lighter than the Violet. So these were used, this one was used with the, the Violet, and this is Hydrangea. So you can see that it's a little bit softer. So I wanted to show you how you can make these a little bit softer. Let me just set that over to the side. I believe that you can see this in plain view. And we're gonna use the light shade of the muted brown to color in our sweet, sweet hedgehog. And I just learned that one of my customers had two hedgehogs. Do you know I had no idea that you could have a hedgehog for a pet? And I don't know why. But oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. They must have been so, so, so fun. So Debbie, you're gonna have to tell me all about them this weekend at the Operation Smile Crop when I see you, if you see this video beforehand. And I'm taking the medium now and I am coloring him in just like that. And then we're gonna go back over his little ears and his nose and the outer perimeter of his little body and we're just gonna add some depth here with the medium shade. I love these markers. And I've really been having a lot of fun using them and coloring with them. Just getting in those little white spaces, going back over his cute little ears. I love how you can add just a little bit of depth here. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. So let me hold him up so far so that you can see what he looks like. And now we're going to take the light shade of dull green and I'm gonna use that for our little stem here. And then I'm gonna color in the leaf. And then I'm gonna go back over it with the medium. And I really try to just use the tip. And a lot of times I will take a deep breath and hold it so that my hand doesn't shake. That looks great. And now we're going to use the hydrangea. 
in light. And you can color your flowers whatever you want. If you want them to be more like daisies, you absolutely can. But I am so partial to purple and I really loved using these markers. So I really wanted to show you how gorgeous these purples are and how much they look so nice next to both Wisteria and Royal. And I'm just using some light circular motions and I'm trying not to go past the black line because the alcohol bleeds, you don't have to go right up to the edge. And then we're gonna take the medium and color in that center. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And then I like just taking the medium and the dark and just accenting these little lines. Just like that. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. And if you wanted to, you could actually make that center even darker. Look at how brilliant that is. And then you could come back over here and just add even more depth. Like the sky is the limit with coloring. You truly can be the creator of whatever you want. And then I'm gonna take the diamond stickles. Whoops, that was icicle. We're gonna take diamond. And we are going to just color the center of this ever so carefully. And I'm just kind of moving the glitter glue around, kind of tapping it. And then you can also come out here. Let me just shake this down a little bit more. I haven't um, used this in a while, so I'm gonna tap it onto this scratch piece of paper and it's getting down to the end. There we go. And I'm just gonna just draw some little hash marks to just make sure that those little petals get accented. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. I just love the dimension that Stickles does. Look at how beautiful he is. He's just so pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay, we are gonna carefully put him on here with some foam tape and I'm going to do my best to not get stickles all over me. We'll see if I can succeed. So I'm gonna just turn this little guy upside down and I'm just tearing foam tape as I need it and pressing down and then one last little piece right over here on this part. And then I'm gonna carefully peel off the backing. Okay. Oh, let's see if I can get it off without ruining him. Okay, I did, good, good, good. Okay, he is gonna go sit right over here and might have to cover up thankful a little bit but you know what I think I did it I did pretty well this one I did a lot better but I did turn him a little bit so that the thankful wasn't getting cut up this actually is going to be just perfect because even with it going into the envelope there's going to be that little bit of uh, forgiving space in between my envelope so there we go we're just going to go around this little extra leaf I just love adding extra pieces for added dimension and I just thought that was so perfect to fill in some of that extra empty white space. So let me just get that on there and then this just goes on with some regular tape just like so and he's going to just get tucked in right like that. And there you go. We have another beautiful card featuring the April stamp of the month. Thank you guys so much for popping in and spending some time with me. Have a fabulous weekend. And for those of you that are coming to my Operation Smile Crop on Saturday, I cannot wait to raise some smiles for Operation Smile. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.